Flux was born as a way to create cinematics in Unity, and in order to do that, you have, of course, to be able to handle animations. In this video, I'm going to show you how Flux handles animations. Keep in mind that although Flux helps you create cinematic content, it doesn't do any magic. In the end, to create the best cinematics possible, you need to create bespoke animations. Usually, content is authored in tools such as Maya, which makes sure that everything blends and syncs perfectly. Getting cinematics to work with in-game animations is much harder and only works in very controlled situations. This video is going to show you such a situation, where you grab in-game animations and you build a cinematic from it. This cinematic will comprise of a character that plays an idle animation for two seconds, then runs for a second, vaults an object, and finally slides. Let's get started. We already have a minimalist scene created. It has our character and a box it's going to be used as the item is going to vault. The first thing we need to do is create a sequence, which you can do in the flux window. Now we drag a character into the sequence in order to create a timeline for it. Since we want to play animations, let's add a play animation event. As you can see, Flux Inspector looks much more complex than in previous videos, especially the Track Inspector. That's because of the way New Unity Animation System works, in which you play animations, you need to have an animator controller. To create a new one, simply click on the Create button on the Track Inspector. This will ask you where you want to save it. Now that we have the controller set up, we need to start adding animations. The first one we want to add is the idle animation. To set animations, you can simply drag a file into the track event. When we drag the animation, it didn't accept it. The reason for this is something that we haven't been worrying about so far, frame rate. This is one of the limitations by design of Flux. Since Flux is more concerned about the integrity of the sequence as a whole, it works just like an animation tool. Whenever you want to do an animation, you need to decide at what frame rate it's going to be played. The reason this animation isn't accepted in this track is because it is done with 30 frames per second, and the sequence is set to 60. To change the frame rate of a sequence, simply go to the frame rate dropdown. By default, it has the most common values, 15, 30, and 60 frames per second. However, you can set a custom one. The default value used when we create sequences can also be changed in the Flux Preferences panel. Notice that when we change the frame rate, it maintains the proportions of the events. Previously, we had 60 frames per second and the event was 600 frames, so the sequence was 10 seconds. When we change the frame rate, it is now 30 frames per second and the event is 300 frames, which maintains the sequence at the same 10 seconds. Now we're ready to drag the animations. First, we drop the idle animation. Notice how the event scales to match the size of the animation. Let's scale it down to 60 frames. Animation tracks are a bit special. They allow you to drop animations directly on them, creating automatically the events. Let's drop the run animation. This animation has special rules applied to it, since it is a looping animation, and it allows us to stretch beyond the length of the animation. Let's set it to 1 second. Finally, we drop the vault and the slide animations. The track is now set, however, when we scrub, we don't see anything happening. That's because of the way Unity handles animation scrubbing at the moment. Whenever animations get played in editor mode, Unity will dirty the scene. In order to avoid that, we created a little preview mode, which can be toggled on and off. You can see it as this little eye icon in the track. If we toggle it on, when we scrub, the animation will now update accordingly. If the content would have been bespoke animations, most likely we wouldn't have to do anything for the animations to look smooth. However, since these animations are in-game animations, we need to tweak the blending in order to make it look smooth. To tweak the blend, we can simply press the Alt key and drag this little handle in the events. It will stretch out an area showing you how long the animation blend is. When we click on the blend handle, it also selects transition in the Unity's inspector so you can properly see what's going on. Since Flux tries to be as friendly as possible, you can also tweak this blend directly in the Transition Inspector. Now that we have them blending, most of them look okay. 
However, the final one looks a bit odd given the movement of the legs in the animations. If we select the last blend, we can see that since we're transitioning at the end of the animations, there isn't an effective blend. To add one, we need to make the vault event shorter in order to allow an overlap of animations. Now there's an overlap of animations, but we can see that the curves aren't matching as well as they could. In order to fix this, we need to change the start offset of the slide animation. First, like we did with the vault, we give it some slack in the ambient. Then, we change the start offset until they match as best as they can. The animations are set. What we need to do now is make sure that the elements in the environment match what's going on with the animations. As you can see, when the character is vaulting, it isn't properly aligned with the box. We can simply place the animation where it's supposed to be, and then adjust the items in the environment to match it. Our cinematic is now finished. If we hit play, we can now see it playing correctly in the scene. Hope you enjoyed this demo.